Hi guys, so I'm Alison. I am a 17 year old study tuber from the West Midlands and to give you a bit of context about me, I study English Literature, Spanish and English Language at A Level and my GCSE subjects were English Language, English Lit, Maths, Combined Science, RS, so Religious Studies, History, Fine Art, Spanish and Electronics. And all of my GCSEs, except electronics, were the new 9 to 1 grading. And today I am talking about 10 things that I wish I'd known at the start of year 11. So, point number one is about Quizlet. So, if you don't know what Quizlet is, it's an online sort of flashcard app. You can get an app on your phone and it's super, super useful. So, personally, I used it for religious studies quotes because you have to know quotes from like. A religious authority so I think in my case that was the Bible and the Quran because I did Christianity and Islam and for language learning so my vocab units were all on Quizlet and my current A-level ones are as well now so Quizlet for languages is like the ideal tool for just learning vocab but you can use it for like English literature quotes or grammar revision for a language or even science equations but Quizlet is a really useful tool and if you haven't come across it already I would really recommend downloading it and using it because it will save your life during GCSE. As a teenager the chances are you use YouTube a lot and if you're watching this video then you found one of the most useful resources for extending your knowledge or consolidating classwork and that is videos mostly by teachers or even other current or past students who've been in your shoes and they know what they're talking about especially the teachers because they teach the content and each video that like is on the internet tends to go over like a topic or a theme within the subject so for english lit there's videos on the poem each poem from the anthologies so one of the ones i watched when i was in year 11 was to do with exposure context and analysis which gave me different ideas that my teacher hadn't covered in the lesson but was still equally valid and equally useful as what my teacher had told me, giving me like a deeper understanding of the poem itself and of plays and science topics. So YouTube videos are a resource and they're completely free most of the time. So they're definitely a resource that you can afford to use because you can even watch a YouTube video on the bus to school or if you're walking. Though if you're, pro if you're walking, you tend not to have as far to go, but just a 10 minute video is such a good way of consolidating your knowledge from that subject or, or area. Piece of advice number three is with learning content heavy subjects like history, it doesn't have to be just sitting with a textbook for hours or a revision guide. It can be fun and engaging and quite colourful. So for me, I made a massive timeline of all of the events to do with the Cold War when I studied history at GCSE. And this was something that clearly worked really well for me because I still remember most of what was on that ma that um, massive timeline now and it's coming useful for me for English literature because it's context for All Wales 1984 but you could use a timeline for geography even maybe if like you've got to do like case studies or have mind maps for case studies but essentially use colour and bright post-it notes in paper and it will stick in your head much better than just looking at a textbook for hours because most people don't learn the best through reading, they learn through a mixture of things. Then the next point is almost slightly contradictory with talking about revision guides in the last point, but by the revision guides because if you want a useful summary of essentially your course, then your revision guide is like the ideal place to start or the specification for your subject. But sometimes specifications are quite hard to find, but a revision guide, most bookshops or Amazon sell them. And the ones that I used were my exam board revision guides for history, Spanish and combined science. And two of those were AQA, one was LXL, and they were super useful, especially the history because it was like a summary of everything that I needed to know. And then the Spanish and the science ones had checklists at the start, so you could check off a subject once you'd revised them, which I found super useful for me when I was doing revision towards the end of the year. So it was like was checking which bits I knew, which bits I wasn't sure on, and then I could go to my teacher and ask. So you can also get revision guides that aren't 
associated with an exam board so you get York Nature Vision Guides which essentially I think I know they do English ones because that's what I had and they do the text so you can have Romeo and Juliet you could, they do them very level as well because you could get the Handmaid's Tale or the sign of four so revision guides are useful but only if you're going to use them so there's no point in having a revision guide that just collects dust on your shelf for the year that you could be using it so there are always practice questions as well or summary like check checklists that you can you can use a revision guide to do practically anything with it so they're really useful and i really would recommend getting them for the ones the subjects you struggle with Another mostly English related point, but you could apply this to other subjects as well, is that the song lyrics, if the text you study does actually include songs, are a really easy way of learning quotes because we all know that songs get stuck in your head very quickly. And for me, listening to the Blood Brothers soundtrack on Spotify meant that I knew a lot of quotes from the songs and some of the narrator parts because those tend to be included in the songs as well. So that really helped me. Or even listening to an audiobook of your text. So this is not very much an English literature based point, but you could record your religious studies quotes or facts you need to know from maths or science or history and listen to yourself. And while I know everyone hates the sound of their own voice, that is a really good way of listening to the information because it's essentially you summarising what you see on the paper. So it's, it's like how you think. So the next point is ask your subject teachers for practice questions or practice papers because for your year there's going to be at least three English and maths papers or the actual GCSEs that you can sit so that'll be like 12 English papers with language and literature because there's two each year and then I think you'll get two sets of exams for the other subjects you do or one if you do technology or something like health and social because that was like the last ones to change because the year below me were the ones that did the whole new GCSEs whereas I had some that were old some that were new but your subject teachers will be more than willing to give you practice questions and encourage you in doing extra work for your subject because it's really important because the best way to learn how to do something is to practice of my teachers to mark stuff for me because I did m many like loads more practice questions for certain subjects so I did virtually none for electronics but I did so many for history and while electronics was 60% coursework that wasn't as like big but English language wasn't and I didn't do enough practice questions I don't think and my grade reflected that so if you learn anything from this do the practice questions because practice is the best way to technique learn. Technique and timing so that's super important obviously with your GCSEs because they are timed exams and then the next point is stay on top of your coursework commitments and deadlines so this is much more relevant for your sort of practical vocational subjects so like art or technology. The people who didn't do well in coursework because they didn't do it did worse overall because they couldn't really make it up in the exam because the exam was worth less than the coursework. So stay on top of your coursework because things, when you start revising properly, will get very hectic quite quickly. Another languages related tip is if you have a languages assistant, use them because they are an absolute gift to humanity. Because if you are at least AQA for Spanish or any other language, then 25% of your grade is decided by speaking. But that is the one you'll probably do the least practice with in lesson if you've got a large group because there's 13 of us doing spanish obviously my teacher couldn't go around individually and do like a speaking with us in one lesson it would take too long but she did offer revision sessions for speaking after school and during lunch times but if your teacher is not like that and they don't do revision sessions you can always form a speaking group with your classmates and i know people who are doing this at a level as well and they go to a coffee shop and they speak entirely French to each other for like an hour which seems a bit intense for GCSE but you could adapt this to GCSE levels so you could get together at lunchtime and go over a photo card if your course does photo cards because AQA did when I did Spanish and you could describe the photo so que hay en la foto 
um or you could just get together one lunchtime and decide we are just going to speak to each other in our target language whether that be spanish german french or even italian you can do that and that is a really useful way of engaging with the language in the speaking component because it is 25 percent of your grade so you need to do something for it but it's one of the harder ones to do work for because writing you can do that quite independently but speaking is a lot harder or if you're really struggling for people you could just speak to yourself in your target language which is what some people i know did during gcse's because i knew people doing two languages at gcse's they would go between spanish and german quite frequently but essentially practicing speaking out loud and speaking in your target language is the best way of practicing speaking as a whole because it's it's okay to write down what you think you would say but if you're actually saying it then you can look at your pronunciation and how that looks and everything like that and that really helps you point number nine is attend revision sessions if they're offered because revision sessions with your teacher or with another teacher is so useful because the teacher knows the course they know what they are talking about and going to their revision sessions obviously is going to help you with understanding or if you don't understand something you can not ask the teacher to go through it so I used to go to a physics revision session every Wednesday and we would show up and the teacher would essentially give us the book the textbook and say what do you want to go through today which topics are you unsure of which was super useful because it meant that we sort of decided where the revision session was going to go and most teachers will do this if you say I don't understand this can you go through it they will go through it with you because your teachers do want you to do well like like they are there to help you as well because you are doing your the first sort of proper exams that you're so there. with attending revision sessions comes the responsibility of checking these revision sessions are meant for you as a student so if you've been entered for a foundation paper then there's not much point in you sitting in the higher session unless you want to change which one you've been entered for or if you're doing combined science there's very little point going to the triple sessions if they're revising triple content which the chances are they are because triple do so much more content than combined but yeah make sure the revision session you're going to is yours and then the last main point on my sort of learn from me is about your summer so once you walk out of that last exam sometime in june you will have finished and the next sort of big thing with GCSEs is results day which is in August so you've got about a month and a half with nothing like you are free and it is such a good feeling but if you're panicking about results day in June you need to try and stop thinking about it because as someone who spent the entire summer between year 11 and 12 thinking about results day it doesn't help there is nothing you can do about it once it is done and you just need to move on and ha enjoy your summer as much as you can because you won't have fun if you just sit around and wait for results day to come but if you're going out and just enjoying life you will feel so much less stress in the lead up to results day so basically you just need to have a good summer and try not to stress too much because you won't get that summer back and it is one of the longest summers you will have in your life the next longest one or even longer is the one after your a-levels which is another two years so enjoy the freedom while you can because the summer between year 12 and 13 you've got stuff to do you've got like UCAS application I had coursework this summer so enjoy your summer of freedom while it lasts and I hope that the weather is as nice as it was the year that my summer was because we finished exams and then had a heat wave and it was amazing so that's pretty much all that I have to say about advice for people going into year 11. Good luck with your exams, I know you're going to do amazing and I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much to Primrose Kitten for inviting me on your channel and letting me make this video because I really enjoyed making it and I'm so grateful for the opportunity so thank you. Bye guys.